Alright, hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. If you're new here, my name is Marco, currently a first year medical student of Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health. So this vlog is going to be just a short review of this microphone. My fault for wearing a dark polo, but here it is. Let me try to show it in front. And this microphone is the Andour EY510A. It's a lavalier microphone that you can clip on your clothes and hopefully it could give you better audio. So starting now, all the audio you can hear is going to be from this lavalier microphone. Honestly, I just wanted to make this review because I wanted to compare the audio from the onboard microphone of my camera and my phone, as well as compare it to the Taxstar SGC600, which has been my main microphone since I got the thing. Going into this video, I already know this is gonna sound way better than any onboard microphone, mainly because onboard microphones kind of suck unless you're really up close. For example, in scenarios like this, I'm more than a meter away from my camera, so it kind of sucks if I use the onboard microphone of my camera. So in order for me to introduce to you the product, I want to read off some features that it has, and hopefully I can try to clear up what some of those mean because honestly, I'm still new to the audio game, but I think I might have some, some insight, okay? Some lang. So let's start off with the type of microphone. It is a condenser microphone. So compared to the usual microphones that we know, if you guys know the karaoke microphones, the one where you hold it, those are dynamic microphones, and you would need to get it as close as to your mouth as possible, and it would really, I wanna say register really low parts of your voice as compared to condenser microphones that would pick up a lot more sound. So it says frequency range is 20 hertz to 16 kilohertz. To be honest, I don't know what it means. Sensitivity is negative 30 dB plus minus 2 dB. I, I'm pretty sure it just means that the lowest it can pick up is negative 30 decibels. So for example, if we have a person talking maybe 5 meters away at a whisper, it's probably going to pick it up, but it's going to be super soft. The plug socket is going to be 3.5 millimeters. Best comparison I can use is just the generic earphones. Those have 3.5 millimeter jacks. If you have an iPhone and you want to use it with your phone, you would need the little white dongle. You don't really need any other adapter if you want to use it for your phone because it is already natively TRRS, which means it's for smartphones. But if you do want to use it for a camera, you would need the TRS adapter that it comes with. Speaking of which, there is something called a TRS adapter. It's this small thing. Hopefully, it's focusing on it and instead of my hand or something. Basically, what this thing does is you plug your microphone on it, in it, through it, and it would allow you to use this microphone to your camera of choice. The cable length is around 145 centimeters. That's already pretty long. Let's convert that into height mode. Mga 5 feet yan. Item weight, 20.5 grams. Doesn't really matter. All it really says is it's really lightweight. You won't really be bogged down by this mic. Okay, so one thing before I mention, I'm gonna switch over to this mic right now. There's something called a pickup pattern and compared to the SGC600, which is going to be this pickup pattern, it's called a super cardioid pickup pattern. Basically, the pickup pattern means that the tax star picks up everything in front of it, a little bit on the side and super small behind it. This microphone, this tiny little microphone, is omnidirectional, which means it picks up everything around the microphone. Imagine there's a ball, and at the center of this ball is this microphone. That's basically the pickup pattern. So it doesn't really matter what direction the microphone is going to be. As long as it's in front of my mouth, it's going to be pretty much picking up everything it gets. All right, so those are pretty much all the features of this microphone. If you do have any more questions about it, you could probably comment it down below and I'll try to answer as best I can. So the next part of this video is going to be comparing the performance of different microphones. So it will test out onboard microphones of my phone and the camera. This one when plugged into the phone and the camera and then the Taxstar SGC600 phone camera as well. So yeah, I'm pretty excited for this one because this is really the main chunk of this video and I'm just nerding out at this point. I'll just send you guys off to the tests. Peace. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash.
Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. All right, so those are pretty much all the tests that I did. It's pretty much just outdoor and indoor and then phone versus camera. And I just finished editing both of them. And I just want to give my thoughts on what I heard from both. Before I continue with the video, I want you guys to try and guess which microphone is which. So which one do you think is the lavalier mic? Is it mic A or mic B? I'll let you gather your thoughts for a minute. That's not the minute, but let's go. Okay, so mic A is actually Taxstar SGC600, my main microphone. And mic B is the is the Andour lavalier microphone. What are my thoughts on this microphone? I honestly think in general, it sounds good. As in, okay, for the price point of 179 on sale, 169 on sale at that, I paid a total of 234 for shipping that in kasama dun. And I honestly think it's a really decent microphone. If you're someone who's looking for a very first microphone, if you want to get into vlogging or making videos like this, I would honestly highly recommend getting this. It's very affordable and it has a lot of use cases, which by the way, I will try to talk about later. So to get into some detail of what I observed when I was making the test or editing the test rather, I genuinely think that when it comes to outdoor recording, the lavalier microphone actually did better than my shotgun microphone, the Taxstar SGC600. Now there are several factors for this and I think the one that I really believe is the reason why it sounds better is the fact that it is closer to my mouth as possible. General rule of thumb I gave in a review before, I'll try to link it down here. For you to really get good audio quality, you have to put the mic or the audio source as close to the mic as possible. So this is less than a dunkal. As compared to the shotgun microphone mount that I did, which was around this this distance, an arm's length away. So that distance of one arm length away versus one dangkal away, which is just this size, that is a really significant difference. And I honestly think that because it's so close, I can opt not to really raise my voice. So I can really make my voice sound deeper and much more manly than it is. One thing I noticed is that when I connect this lavalier microphone directly to the camera, the audio is actually louder as compared to when I use the shotgun microphone. Again, I think that is more of just the distance from the shotgun microphone to my mouth. I tried to use a level of sound that would be realistic in an application scenario. So my thoughts on this microphone, honestly, I would recommend it to anyone who could afford it and who's starting out. But to someone who already has a shotgun microphone, would I recommend it? Probably not. To me, shotgun microphones are a much more versatile piece of equipment. This one only has a couple uses. You can't really walk around with it. Well, you can, but you will be restricted with the wires unless you get a lavalier mic that is wireless, but that is more expensive. So with this specific model of a microphone, I wouldn't really recommend it if you already have a decent shotgun microphone. Here are some use cases that I thought of while writing this script. Um, first is when you want to interview someone who is going to be sitting down. You know those classic documentaries, sitting down, looking off to the camera like this, talking to you while the camera is like in a very dramatic angle. The second use case I could think of is during a project for school. So for example, in med school, we do have physical examinations with a patient. And the thing is, our whole flow is about explaining what the physical examination is for, performing the physical examination, and then immediately answering or saying the results. So if I had the shotgun microphone that is just mounted on the camera and I'm moving around with my patient over here, it's pretty difficult to hear what I am saying or what I am saying to the patient, or I would have to walk back, forward back to the camera just so I can explain. But if I do have a lavalier mic like this, I have it connected to a phone, put the phone in my pocket, just find a way to hide the wire. It's a pretty convenient way of having really good audio quality while being able to move around the room and, you know, interact with the patient without much constraint. Hello po, ako po si Marco Malilin, estudyante ng Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health. Negative po on ascites. 
The next is actually talking head vlogs like this. So personally, as someone who prefers making videos like this, where I just sit down and talk about stuff and then film B-roll after, especially because you don't really move around much, this won't detect much motion, won't detect much air. So if you're in a really controlled environment like your room, this is a much, much better option than an onboard microphone. To finally end this video, my verdict for this microphone, if you wanna get into making videos, it's a very good first step to getting better audio. But if you already have a shotgun microphone, let's say, I wouldn't really recommend getting it anymore. All right, that pretty much ends this video. Hopefully you guys found this helpful in your purchase. I know it's a very long-winded video, but I want it to be as thorough as I can. Um, if you guys have any questions about the microphone, comment down below. I'll try to answer as fast as possible. But then if it's something that I haven't really tested, or I haven't really used it for, I will try to use it before I answer you. So I have a very definitive answer. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I enjoyed making it. I really do like making reviews because, you know, I get to buy new stuff and use it. <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Really goes a long way. And if you want to subscribe really fast, circle's right there. And if you wanna watch more videos, which are mine, hopefully, uh, videos up there and down there. See you guys in my next video. Peace.